Let's look at the appendicular skeleton for a minute. We can actually start on this one, the clavicle attaching to the scapula. But I would like to move down or move over to this skeleton and show you the humerus of the arm and the two muscles, excuse me, the, and show you the two bones of the forearm, the more lateral radius, the more medial ulna. I would like to show you how we make the movement called supination versus pronation. Again, pronation, supination. It's an interesting thing. In the anatomical position, these two bones, radius and ulna, are parallel to one another. When I pronate the hand, can you see how the radius rotates right here and now crisscrosses the ulna? The ulna is stationary, but the radius rotates. So now the hand is like this. Now I'm going to do the opposite supination, like a bowl of soup, if you want to remember it. Okay. Watch, watch the radial head there, right here, as it rolls, 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 and rotates and pulls the radius back, and now supination. That's why this guy doesn't have any arms. So many students over the years have done this. That uh, it didn't last as long as we would have hoped. Moving on down to the pelvis, which is formed from the two coxal bones which articulate, that is to say, join to the sacrum. Okay, well let's do a high kick here and look at the femur, the longest bone in the body, the head, neck, and greater trochanter. When someone breaks their hip, as we say, it's the neck of the femur that is the, part, the place that breaks. You can see the weight that it bears. This is the distal end of the femur, the far end. It has smooth surfaces for joining. They're called the medial and lateral condyle. The patella bone fits nicely there. And then we have the big, stout, weight-bearing medial tibia and the more lateral fibula, which does not bear weight here, but stabilizes the ankle. 